Welcome to History Adventuring. This is episode number 404. I'm Brad Hall, and today we're turning 80 years old in Old Time Phoenix. I will turn 80 in Phoenix. No, not real soon, but someday. Well, in Glendale, which is a suburb of Phoenix. It's my greatest wish to live there until my time is done, which as far as I can tell will be a long time from now. I will turn 90, and chances are very good that I'll make it to 100, maybe to 110. So naturally, this morning I got to thinking about what it meant to turn 80 in Old Time Phoenix. Since we can time travel, let's go back to Old Time Phoenix and turn 80. My first thought, of course, is Sun City, which really isn't Phoenix, but it's in the Phoenix metropolitan area. It's January 1st, 1960. In order to live in this retirement community, we need to be 50. Okay, time to do some math. If we're 50 in 1960, we were born in 1910, right? And growing up in those days, we would have seen some people turn 80, mostly women, but not nearly as many as there would be in the future. But make no mistake, people did live 80 plus years back in those days. My grandfather barely made it to 65, but my grandma, who was born in 1901, made it to 99. They lived in Minnesota, and whether the cold weather shortens or lengthens your life, I don't know. Anyway, so while the young person at the bank may snicker at a 50-year-old person taking out a 30-year loan in 1960, many of those loans were completely paid. And over the years, even though Sun City has changed its minimum age to 55, more and more people glided past 80 or 90 or 100. Speaking for myself, the first time I heard of Sun City, back when I was in my 20s, all old people seemed about the same age to me, from 50 to 100. They had gray hair, seemed to complain about the government, and insisted that that's not music, that's just noise. And I'm older and wiser now, and I have a lot of time ahead of me to get much older and much wiser. Thank you for time traveling with me. This has been History Adventuring. I'll talk to you later. <laughs>